welcome to a special edition of the Nick Gaming Podcast with me, Lee Milner, and Chris Barrow. Yes, it's a retro special today. You excited for that? Yeah. Well, you like your retro games, don't you? Love retro. Do you know who else loves retro? Who? Your dad. Does he? <laughs> yeah, he's been playing. Does he really? He's been playing PlayStation 1. Have you seen? What? I asked your mum to secretly... How do you know this and I don't? Because I asked your mum to secretly film your dad playing the PlayStation, and this is what happened. Right. My We're in COVID and my husband went up in the attic and found PS2 and PS1 and decided to spin it down and start to have a go. And this is where he is most evenings. What are you playing, Gary? Uh, FA Premier League football. And are you winning? It's nil nil. It's Leeds United. I'm I'm one nil one nil down now. Is that because of me? Yeah. All right. Okay then. You just you just made him score. <laughs> what? How long has he been doing that for? The thing is, he doesn't. He gets stuck on a level, like me, <laughs> and then uh, that's it. Right. So we're celebrating all things retro in this episode and i'm really excited about this we're going to be playing actually playing and streaming as well later on uh streets the new streets of rage 4 Yeah, it took them 26 years to make the sequel years. to Streets of Rage 3. Because it was originally <laughs> originally uh, released on the Sega. Yeah, and also you could play it in arcades, but you had to put in the, the quarters. or The, the quarters. The, We're what? American now. The quarters. What was it in the UK? The nickels. The nickels. It was 10p, wasn't it, to play? 10p. And then it went up to a pound. Yeah. Oh, anyway. Oh, T-shirts as well, by the way. Mine's, who's, whose is better? That's what I want to know. Okay. I can't Get even voting. See. Get your Mario up. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay, okay. Chill out, chill All out. Right. I do like the Crash Bandicoot one, though. Yeah, it's, it's good. Cool, Might it? nick that one as well. First, Lisa, with her bestest news voice, <coughs> genuinely sitting at this shiny dining table up. news area. Warming this up. isn't an exercise. You don't need to warm up for this. Uh, I just need to shuffle. Oh, shuffle, you're just literally shuffle, shuffling. Shuffle around. Okay. I don't know, I can't work under these conditions. Oh, camera's on. Okay, ready for the news. Right, news face. Over 85,000 games have been made available in the UK for frontline NHS care workers to thank them for their efforts in fighting COVID-19. The scheme, known as Games for Carers, has been in such high demand that they only have Steam and Epic Store games available. If you're an NHS worker, you can grab a key from the Games for Carers website with your NHS email address. Oh, good catch. Uh, Andy Murray has won the Madrid Open. Well, sort of. Eh. Uh, eh. Uh, no! And there it is. Heartbreaks no. for David Goffman. And he actually won the virtual Madrid Open, where 16 leading ATP players swapped their rackets for their PlayStation 4 controllers. I tell you, we've got all the props here today. Um, David Goffin was Murray's opponent in the final, and he beat the Belgian 7-6 on the Tennis World Tour game. Well done, Andy. Although amateur players are returning to the court, tennis tournaments are likely to be suspended until mid-July because of coronavirus. Uh, I'll put away my tennis racket then, and my tennis ball, and, whoops, and uh, my PlayStation 4 game. Now, one of the biggest esports events has been postponed until 2021. Sad face. The International, which awards big money prizes to the winners, was due to take place in Stockholm in August. Last year's prize money totaled £28 million. The organisers say they will share more information when we have it, but aren't expecting to be able to confirm a date for a while. Fortnite news now, and on April the 23rd, more than 12 million Fortniters um, 
yeah, that I just made a word up, uh, stopped fighting to watch a digital avatar of the rapper Travis Scott teleport around the beach and launch audience members into outer space. Sounds like one of my Ibiza trips. Anyway, it was part of a 10-minute virtual concert, the game's biggest event ever. 27.7 million unique gamers attending. That's a lot of uniqueness. It all went pretty smoothly, actually, unlike the launch of the new Assassin's Creed game. Developed by Ubisoft, everyone was expecting new gameplay when this trailer arrived. Very nice, but no gameplay. Plus, there was a moment where it looked like their new game was called Assassin's Creed Offline. Oops. Despite all the controversy, Ubisoft has revealed that the Assassin's Creed Valhalla trailer has had over 100 million views in just 10 days. So someone must care. <laughs> Thanks to Lee Milner, who read that news from our dining table for authenticity. I'll put that on my CV. What, that you moved two steps? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> put it on my tracker. <laughs> this is the attachment that you didn't know you needed. We've just discovered that the Game Boy Pocket Sonar is a thing that existed quite a long time ago, actually. Do you want to tell us about the Game Boy? Are you Boy? sure it's something we need? <laughs> Depends okay. if you want to go fishing. <laughs> let, me, let me just read you this, right? Okay. Apparently, it's a peripheral for the Nintendo Game Boy, made by Bandai, that used sonar to locate fish. Mm. What? Up yeah. to 20 metres, 65 feet, if you're wondering. Thanks very much. Uh, underwater for the sport of fishing and contained a fishing mini game. It was released in Japan in 1998. Is this a joke? This is for real. So you put it on your Game Boy? Yeah. And you can fish? Yeah. Yeah, never going to buy that. <laughs> but hang on, you can buy one. Look, I sent you an eBay link. Thing. Oh, $127. $127! That's more than that's a, a bit, Game Boy. That's a bit pricey. Well, it depends how much you like fishing, doesn't it? Not yeah. that much. Not that much. <laughs> Not that much. Wow, okay. Well, I mean, for all you keen uh, fishers out there, fishers... <laughs> Fishes. If you're a fish listening, you'll be pleased that we're not going to buy one. <laughs> what? Fishermen? Fish. <laughs> Fishes? What do you call them? Fisher people. <laughs> fish, fishermen. They call it fishermen. Fishermen. Yeah. But it's a bit sexist, isn't it? Yeah. Why not fisher women? I don't know. Fisher children. Fish. Fisher Price. <laughs> Now, I've always liked the idea of VR, uh, but we're still thinking about getting a headset. The virtual reality headset's quite expensive. I, I'm tempted, but I don't know yet. How much are they? Do you know? Hundreds. Hundreds. Mm. Okay, all right. Mm. It might mess my hair up. I mean, I'm not really pleased about wearing these headphones, but anyway. <laughs> okay. So if you have one and are wondering about university, then this might be the game for you. Now, I know that you went to Lincoln University mm -hmm. in Lincolnshire. Mm -hmm. um, well, one of the doctors there... And one of the professors there has turned the Brayford campus that you know so well into a virtual reality game. Ah, oh, memories. But I, I don't. I fell some into things, it some things that you did don't need to be VR simulated, <laughs> do they? I don't want to relive those moments. <laughs> In fact, I can't because I can't remember them. Well, that's good. It's probably for the best it's for everybody. For the best for everybody. Uh, so this is Dr. Chris Headland, and I asked him why did he make it. So this, this all started really is uh, we were trying to create a like a virtual meeting room space. Um, and because we wanted to use this for university research projects and even actually embedding some like research experimentation in there, we tried to base it off a university building. Um, now, this was happening literally right at the B, just like the week before uh, lockdown. University is, is a weird engagement, right? It's you, you move there, it becomes your home, it becomes a big part of your life. And suddenly all these people were being told that they, they basically couldn't go to, couldn't go home, couldn't socialize with their friends, couldn't, you know, mingle with their kind of extended family. And I mean, university is a lot more than its buildings. It's a lot more than its campus. It's a community. It is, it's the research. It's the ethos of the environment. 
but the the buildings are really closely linked to a lot of those memories as well so we wanted to create something where people could at least get kind of a a taste of being back on campus um and we went for this kind of reimagining because um for one I didn't re- really, really didn't want to try and rebuild everything from scratch, right? You know, you can get bogged down in doing every single meter of every single corner and then making sure that the walls are rounded here instead of, you know, there being a straight line. H- how kind of liberal were you when it came to the, the actual designing of the campus? The actual, like, footprint of the buildings is pretty, pretty accurate. What we did was we took a load of vectors of things like Google Maps, Google Street Maps, and we used those to kind of map the, the footprints. And we, what we wanted to do was, from specific kind of uh, viewing angles, we wanted to make sure you got the same perspective, that you saw the same buildings ahead of you, um, that you got the same kind of basic visual experience. But beyond that, we were pretty liberal. We wanted to make sure that all the buildings were, were actually recognisable as the building they were supposed to be. But we weren't first like, I mean, we, we bought this, uh, this, this pack of prefab assets like this modular building kit um, because we're not 3D modelers and we were trying to cut corners wherever we possibly could and if one of these prefab sheets had like five windows where the actual building on site had had six we weren't too fussed but if you learn to navigate this you can also you know navigate in uh, around the, the campus you can get a space sen- uh, sense of where you are one question that my wife who actually went to the university said i had to ask you was did you include the swans, because swans are such a, apparently a huge part of going to Lincoln University. Yeah, we 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 are super into our waterfowl at Lincoln. Um, we everything is swan something, you know. Our our bar is the swan. Our sports teams are always the 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 swan something. It's fantastic. It's it's part of what makes the the campus unique. We're on uh, the side of the city centre lake, which I like. I mean, how many cities are built around a lake? It's it's beautiful. We've got this this gorgeous marina um and it, it's part of what we do now we really i mean even our mascot our student union mascot is is swanee but i am not a 3d modeler and i'm not an animator and i could not find anything that didn't sat, look like a really ugly swan um i couldn't find anything that matched the rest of our assets and i thought this is just not going to work now fortunately so we couldn't get anything out in version one fortunately one of my colleagues from the uh the school of media uh Graham Cooper um, has created this absolutely fantastic swaggering swan. He's managed to capture the essence of swan, swan tood, you know, it, perfectly. It it struts, it swaggers, it's got this kind of like funky attack mode. Uh, <laughs> and we we try, we were actually working on this uh, last weekend. We're hoping he's going to go out there in the next update. How cool is that? Pretty cool. Dr. Chris Headland, who's a VR researcher uh, at the University of Lincoln, and you can get the beta version of Lincoln Island for free now from the Microsoft Store. I am that which you see before you, nothing more. This is the Naked Gaming Podcast with Chris Barrow and me, Lee Milner. Now on to new releases, and I actually genuinely waited up till midnight he did for this he one did. and then it came out eight hours later disappointment <laughs> well if you're waiting up till midnight you expect it to be there but anyway this is streets of rage so excited for ah! <laughs> <laughs> Now, we both played this as kids. So we played Streets of Rage. I played one mostly. What about you? One. Yeah. I think I only played one. I think I did a bit of two, but then in three, there was someone on roller skates, which I can't, I don't really remember that. But anyway, so this has new characters, uh, five characters that you want to play as, and then you can unlock classic characters in their sort of 8-bit forms, and they look really cool. Um, The levels are quite beatable. Um, We managed to get through it. Uh, but it's very hard to get an S rating. Each stage is yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, rated yeah, yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. Um, but I wanted more playable characters, like cool new characters. They've got the retro ones, but I wanted newer I see what characters. You, I see what you mean, you but I quite like things when they do retro. Simple. <laughs> when they, no, 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 no. When they do retro revivals, I don't like it to be t- too different. Yeah, and this is not that different. They have got some new characters. Yeah. And the graphics... Mm. 
I mean, it, it's like cartoony, yeah. which I haven't really seen in the game in a long time. It's really nicely done. 26 years in the music making. Music is oh. rad. You, during the level five or something, you were going, oh, the music's banging. It was like, banging. <laughs> right. yeah. It was pretty raving. But then the, the game was always about the music yeah, 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 accompanying yeah. your yeah. fighting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we actually streamed this game uh, in full. So if you look out for Lee Milder and Chris Barrow on YouTube and also add in Naked Gaming in there, you can actually find our stream of the entire game. It takes about three hours to beat, depending yeah. on how good you are. Um, anyway, <laughs> once we've worked it all out, you'll be able to watch that probably by the new year. So. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I thought it was really good. What did you think? Rating out of 10? You know what? I give it a nine and a half mm. out of 10. Do you know what? That's good. I was going to say nine. Only because I think once you've completed it... Mm. I don't really want to do it again. You can fight each other on it, but it, it loses... I want more levels. Exactly. I want um, bigger bosses, bigger, badder bosses. Yeah. Um, but it is really good for a retro revival. So Streets of Rage 4 is available on PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, yes, and Windows for around £20. We've been playing it on Switch and PlayStation, and it's just as good on either. It's worth your money. Snake, what's wrong? Snake! Snake! Well, that's it for this month. Hang on, we haven't mic. like we haven't like should we get Bailey involved? Cuz nobody's ever seen him. Well, he has been featuring throughout the episode, but mostly just then. lying down. Hang on then. Oh, okay. is this happening now? Time. Okay, well, while Bailey Milner Barrow the bunny <laughs> Did you just wave after at my camera? While Bailey Milner Barrow the bunny gets involved, uh, you can look out for the video edition of this podcast. Just search for Chris Barrow and Lee Milner Naked Gaming Podcast on YouTube. You will find it there. You can subscribe to our channel and also you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. It's Bailey. Naked Gaming Podcast. That was good. Time, so this is Bailey the rabbit. Oh, he's so fluffy and don't show his that bit of him because <laughs> he's dirty. This is him. <laughs> and um, he's really fluffy and really lazy he's so fluffy though at the moment what's why is he so fluffy is he molting he this is all he does <laughs> look at look at him now he's like me when i get out of bed in the morning <sighs> do you want to contribute okay then. thanks very much indeed uh well that's it for this month uh you can find us again next month on the 21st of june when we're talking about loads <laughs> more new releases in fact everywhere. stop fluffing everywhere bailey <laughs> in fact we're going to be playing uh, Star Wars Episode One Pod Racer, which they're re-releasing. We're going to go head to head. I'll win ya. I always do. Do you want to say anything else? So just aside from from gaming for a for a minute, oh. right? Because we're doing this as a special video podcast. Uh, nobody ever knows what it actually looks like. Oh, you're going to show what, everybody? Yeah, ah. because no, because when you when you do this sort of thing, everyone thinks, "How on earth does it does it work? It must be so glamorous." You mean our no, room no, no. isn't all tidy? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, I'm going? having a Minor panic attack right now with how messy it is. Why don't you go to camera... No, why don't you go to... Oh, you're going for camera... Yeah, yeah. Camera two, which is yours. Right, mine's camera right. one. So look. So this is... Look, mind the washing line at the back. Yeah, look at that bit. But, but this is the setup. We've got the scripts here. A little microphone. Uh, the desk with all the, the light colours on Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. A little light colour, look. Um, and that's the other... <laughs> Are you going to cut to that camera in back? <laughs> yeah! Wow. There we go. Hello! <laughs> so anyway, so that's the, that's the setup. Do you want really. a poster as well? I like our poster. Oh right then, this is the poster. This is the this is this news is how far I've got to move to do the news. Anyway, so that that's that's it basically. Oh, let me put it back. Hang on. Oh, thanks. There you go. Great stuff. And uh, yeah, that's how it works. I think our t-shirts need more of an outing. Look. <gasps> okay, so proud of that. that so proud good. of that. Hey, let us know if you uh, you like the video oh, editions of the podcast like. as well. You can get in touch at Naked Gaming Pod. Um, we want to hear from you, but we've really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's been good. We hope to do more of these in the future. But in the meantime, peace out. Mic drop. Are you ready to, to hit? Do you the mic, mic drop with this? Yeah. All right, here we go. Go on. Go. Oh, oh, the table. The table. Hi Bailey. You excited about the podcast? Yeah, me too. <laughs>